Hi everyone, um, today I'm gonna continue my tier list, but this time for story map stages. So unlike PvP, there isn't really a thing as a meta, because you don't really need to worry about other people are uh, using. You just look at the maps, and I don't really think there's any pattern in the map stages as to kind of which enemies or knights appear more often. So you kind of just need a way to uh, counter every single situation as you appear. So, you know, I actually think story map tier lists are quite um, meta irrelevant. So a lot of the nights I'll be talking about will still be good in the future. There may be some discrepancy in terms of maybe the levels, um, because whether you unlock your armor or whether you unlock your constellation, that will affect how good the knight is. Uh, take a good example, be misty like. Before you unlock kind of the constellation armors for everyone, Misty is probably one of the best knights for at early stages. Um, he can single-handedly carry you very far in the story maps. But afterwards, uh, you find the enemies are a lot more tankier, uh, a lot more bulkier. They hit a lot harder, and Misty is just not as good as others. Whereas you get some other knights who don't have their armor and constellation unlock, and become so much more useful. So you know, vast majority of the times, maybe the level will influence whether you would be able to utilize the knight or not in your current story stages. Um, but my tier list right now is kind of based on assumption that you have your uh, constellation, your armor, or up to pretty good level. You know, your armor is probably going to be at least level 20 or level 30, your constellation, possibly three star, maybe even nine stars for some cases, etc. Um, and all right, now let's go through kind of various different tiers. So at the top tier, I have what I think is absolutely essential for you to um, get at least one copy. Um, the reason why I say at least one copy is because a lot of this have very good use case to counter certain knights. So even as a one single copy, they can already satisfy a lot of the tasks that you want them to do. And therefore, you know, I, you, you know, ideally for some people like, um, Sagittarius AI, right? If you have a really high level, he can absolutely carry you through a lot of storm. Right? But even if you don't have a very high level one, Sagittarius AI, even at a low level, uh, just a single copy it will be useful enough to counter, you know, the opponent's Potomi, uh, Crest Cam, Camus, maybe C Dragon Cannon, etc. So that's kind of why everyone in this tier, you need at least one copy. Um, so I just talked about Sagittarius AI, uh, C Dragon Cannon, that's another obvious choice. You need at least one copy to counter certain knights such as Camus or uh, Padomi, etc. You may think that you only need one, uh, such as Aya or C Dragon Cannon. That is not strictly the case because sometimes you actually want to use uh, the enemy's skill against themselves. So Sagittarius Aya will only interrupt them, whereas C Dragon Cannon can actually make them use uh, the skill to someone else. So, for example, if I'm up against Camus, uh, Sagittarius Sayer can only delay when Camus is going to freeze him. He won't be able to cancel it out, where Sea Dragon can actually cancel it out and actually make the opponent's Camus to actually attack one of their own knights as well. So, you know, they actually have their own uses. Uh, next up, we have Agati. Once again, a single, uh, the higher level, the better, obviously, but a single copy can still do. The main thing you want here is his uh, immunity, even when he dies so when he become like invincible for a few seconds that's absolutely amazing uh when you're up in story map when the enemies are so much higher level than you the fact that you can survive an extra three or four seconds on the field that's already by itself absolutely amazing so that's kind of why it's a must have um you have serious once again the higher level, the better, because then you can actually put up a shield and stun people. But even at low level, that starting Cosmo boost can sometimes make the difference in story map. So you want at least one copy here. Uh, Poseidon, similar to Agathe, you have uh, beginning five second immunity. Uh, so that's very good. If the opponent has a Dante as well, who do massive amount of damage, Poseidon is able to bounce off that damage back to Dante, and you essentially cripple the opponent's Dante straight off the start of the battle. So that's also very useful. So at least one five star copy would be enough. Uh, then you have Krishna and Kasa. They do similar kind of jobs, um, basically putting up a shield. Most of the time, um, let's say the enemy has a Potomi, who will be able to one shot one of your knights. Uh, your Krishna or Kasa can help you to avoid that. Uh, 
Once again, you may think that you know if we really have Canon and such as Saya, why do I still need those two? Uh, I kind of agree to some extent, which is why I put them later down on this tier list. But um, even then, I would still say, imagine late, much later on, we need to fill in three different teams, right? You may have your first team have such as Saya, second team have your C Dragon. You still need someone for your third team, and that's kind of why they are still. I think it's very important for you to get at this one vanilla copy. Uh, next we have Leo Iki. Leo Iki is also interesting, a bit similar to your Poseidon uh, Angati. He has a small bit of immunity. Uh, he dies off very quickly, but uh, when he dies off, he is going to revive and then stun off the enemy with his ultimate. Very useful. Um, so because of that stunning effect, even though he don't last as long as the others, you are stunning the enemy rather than just saying you are not, not taking damage. So in some sense, that can actually be more useful because let's say Agati, yes, you are invincible. You won't be uh, dead for those five seconds, but your other knights are still taking damage. Whereas Leo Iki, when he dies, he's going to stun people. So your whole team will be uh, free from damage for those two seconds. So that's actually why Leo Iki is also very useful. And I would suggest at least one copy. Uh, of course, once again, similar like all of the other knights, if you actually have him up really high, he can become of the damage deal as well. But even at one single copy, he is already useful enough that I think he should be on this tier. Next, we have the superstar. Those are really good knights that will be very useful in story maps. They will normally be kind of the main cornerstone for your story map and kind of decide whether you're able to pass that stage or not. So you have, first of all, Sagalite, massive damage dealer. Um, with his meteorite at uh, 14 seconds or 18 seconds or 22 seconds in, if you can survive long enough, he's going to cripple everyone to half health. And considering how bulky the later on story map stages are, that's absolutely insane. So that's kind of why he's definitely in the superstar tier. Uh, Hangar Styrian, also very useful. He is able to make the enemy back row a lot weaker. So that by itself is really good. He gains Cosmo extremely fast and then he launches his ultimate, who, which is able to dispel buffs uh, and interrupt people. So because he gains Cosmo so fast, uh, a lot of time you can actually withhold his ultimate and only uh, use it to interrupt the enemy's ultimates, etc., or enemy skills, etc. Uh, so he's very useful in a lot of the story map when you need to uh, manually control to make sure you cancel out certain enemy attacks. Uh, across cameras, very useful once again. Similar to kind of Leo Iki, the, the main thing is to kind of uh, uh, make sure everyone's kind of frozen so that um, you don't take damage. Uh, the difference is that Leo Iki is able to do that at uh, 5 star, whereas across cameras, if you want to freeze everyone, start the battle, you need to max his clothes. So that's kind of the reason why I think he is, even though very good, but one tier lower than Leo Iki. Uh, next, we have Aris Mu, absolutely amazing character, probably one of the best support in the game. Uh, his crystal wall is going to make sure you last twice as long in the battle. So, you know, a lot of time he will be the one making a difference. You just need to survive the game, survive the battle long enough for Aris Mu to put up his crystal wall and then you kind of sort it afterwards. So very good. Uh, next up, we have Moses. Also, you need max constellation, max close for him. But once you do get that, he's absolutely amazing. He is able to make everyone... Uh, make you take a lot less damage, 40% less damage and start the battle. Considering how strong the enemies uh, get later on, um, don't underestimate that 40%. A lot of time people can kill you off with their normal attacks. So the fact that Moses is able to protect you against those normal attacks at the very early stage so that you can then launch your ultimate, that's an absolutely game changer. So Moses is also very good in my opinion. Uh, Vogelshun, amazing character, he is basically what sometimes uh, needed in order to make sure you both survive longer and also hit harder with his new builder, um, Storm. You need him at uh, max close though for that to really work, that's kind of why I said he won't be, you can't get him at 5 star for him to do the job, you need at least his max close, but he's definitely a very good character. Next, we have Taurus Adabarone, very good character. You can bounce off damage, but also, very more importantly, he also gets a bit of an like, invincibility effect once you uh, up his close. 
it can be somewhat budget because even at level 20 close you are able to be invincible once so that's already pretty good so that's kind of why he still has a play very similar to agati but you know you need his close you know to do that so that's why he's a lower tier than agati in my opinion um sagittarius sagittarius is very good single killer um in fact, Sagittarius and Desmar, they used to be very, very good in story map because they are kind of the main damage dealers. I do find that later on in the map stages, a lot of time they are not quite strong enough to do all the damage themselves, and you need to pair them up with another carry. But nonetheless, they are normally going to be one of your main source of damage. So just for that reason, you kind of need... Uh, you know, you need some kind of damage dealing knight in your team. And, you know, if you look at who's the highest damage dealer, you have your Sagittarius Seiya, you have your um, Gemini Sega, but then afterwards, it's probably going to be your Desma and be your Sagittarius, etc. So you, they still have a very important role to play in your team. Next, we have Libertur. Libertur is also another amazing character. He can do damage later on. He can be invincible if you max out all his constellation clothes, etc. So he can be like another better version of Agati. But once again, in order for him to really shine, you kind of need um, to max his clothes and max his constellation. It's a very expensive character. Uh, so that's kind of why I put him kind of towards the end and also definitely lower than Agati, in my opinion. Next, we have some situational characters. So situational characters, you don't normally play them in your first or second teams. Um, you may play them in certain situations to counter certain enemies, but just in general, you they're probably not quite good enough to make it to your first two teams. So at the start, we have your Evil Sega and your Gemini Cannon. Evil Sega, it's not really too fragile. Uh, I may even want to put Evil Sega in the third team, but one reason I decided to put him in situational is that Evil Sega a lot of times people's first light and dark character. And purely for that reason, his level is quite high, and that actually makes him a lot of times more uh, able to take a few more hits and last slightly longer than some of your other light and dark characters. So because of that, you know, I want to respect the fact that he is probably one of your highest played, uh, highest level light and dark character, and therefore you probably want to put him in certain situations. But, you know, out of all of the light and dark right now, you know, I would definitely recommend Poseidon and uh, Gemini Sega for sure over your Evil Sega. But he still has a role to play. Uh, then we have Gemini Cannon. Gemini Cannon is useful to link everyone together, but and also being a light and dark character, it's very useful. If you have trouble killing off a story map, uh, Gemini Cannon linking three enemies together can help you immensely. So that's kind of why Gemini Cannon is useful there. And similarly, for a similar reason, Leo is also very useful in case that your damage is not quite high enough. Leo's electricity effect can make sure you do that extra bit of damage to clear the stage. So that's kind of why they both have a role to play in certain situations. Uh, mirror. mirror can be useful when the opponent's knights are so bulky you're not able to take them out but also most importantly i found mirror is a really good counter to uh, enemies towards the baron you're able to uh, immobilize him at the start of the battle so that you don't take the bounce damage so for that reason mirror can be played in certain situations capital insurer um only useful when you have a really bulky enemy formation and you can't take them down uh capcom sure is able to permanently lower their defense so that can then make sure you are actually then able to get through to the enemy's defense so has a role to play but only in those very bulk against very bulky enemies then we have mermaid tetas uh mermaid tetas a lot of time because she links up to the enemy with the highest health um so highest power and a lot of times those are your protector knights so they are not that useful but if you do have a high level Poseidon, the Mermaid Tetris is certainly a lot more playable. So that's kind of why Mermaid Tetris is, can be used in certain situations. Um, then you have four Wind Knights. Um, I put them in situational because, in my opinion, if you go for a Rainbow Team, your first choice Wind Knight is probably going to be a Crest Camus. Outside of a Crest Camus, those four are all viable, depending on the situation. Uh, Seahorse buying is a lot more useful when you need to protect your other front row knight. 
Libra Doco is more useful when you need to actually uh, kind of buff up your other knights to for a bit more of a damage. Uh, and he can also hold the front line quite well. Uh, Community Jew is more kind of like a cheerleading a support role. And similarly, Misty, when you need like a wind healer. So, you know, if you don't have a crest canvas and you need to fill in a second rainbow team, uh, all four of this win night are okay choices depending on the situation and that's kind of why they're in the situation of tier for me then we have certain uh, certain are basically nice that you probably normally wouldn't use at all um, however i won't put them on the sideline they are less used than the situational tier but in some very very rare occasions you they probably still would um, come up just to fill in your certain. Maybe you just need a particular knight uh, to satisfy a particular role. So rather than those in situational, it's normally when you want to clear the stage and therefore you bring one of them to help you to clear that stage. Those in certain is normally what I consider is that I just need to find the fifth person for my team. I just need someone with a specific element to fill in that role and therefore I just need to pull someone. Um, a classic example here is kind of why I put Sorrento and Shaka in this tier. They are a light and dark character. So if you need a rainbow team for your third team, and you don't have a high enough level for your other ones, then you need one of them. You know, as simple as that. So you need them. Uh, the reason why Shaka is obviously in third team is he is going to be too low level, star level, to do anything. So he can only be used to fill in your formation bonus. Sorrento is certain because Sorrento is normally good in PvP uh, or other cases where you can suppress the enemy's ultimate because you suppress how much Cosmo they get. But in story maps, uh, enemies can kill you off with their normal attacks. You, they don't need to release their ultimate. So that's kind of why I don't think Sorrento have much use in story maps, to be honest. Um, then you have Kraken Isaac and Kraz Huger. They are used for wind formation. So if you want your third team to be a wind formation based, then they're okay. Um, so so no wind formation based, a freezing kind of synergy formation based, and and also wind formation based. I guess then they're okay as a third choice for your team. Then you have your babble, who is if you want your third team to be kind of like a burn damage kind of uh, formation, then you can play babble in your third team. Then you have mist. Uh, Marine and Argo, they are okay knight, but the only reason why you put them in their third team is for their RNG. So Argo can petrify people, and Misty can dodge, uh, sorry, Marine can dodge people. So you can definitely have them in your third team to just play on the RNG a bit, see whether you can get lucky to petrify or dodge people and pass the stage that way. Uh, then you have Asina. Asina is normally a pretty bad character, um, but just in the rare case, you need a water healer. She is the only water healer right now. So, you know, just for that reason, she kind of deserves a place on the third team. Then, uh, lastly, we we'll have the sidelines. So, those are nice that I don't think you would be using them at all. Uh, Aphrodite is pretty good in PvP, but in Story Map, he is just too fragile. And uh, because he's so fragile, you won't even get a chance to damage, uh, to poison enough. Uh, to deal any kind of subse um, efficient, sorry, sufficient damage to your enemies. So that's kind of why um, Pisces Aphrodite is in, on the sideline for me. Similarly, um, Padomi and Sheena, they are too fragile. Uh, and yeah, the rest of the knights, they are just not quite as good. Um, so I don't really see them having any use. So yeah, so this is kind of the tier list uh, in my opinion right now for story maps uh, you have those at the top that you definitely definitely make sure you get at least one copy they will be so useful in certain situations that you absolutely need to have them in your box and then i'll probably suggest you start building up um, from your superstar tier uh, pick two or three knights uh, find out what's their win condition and build two teams or three teams around them so you know pick from those superstars you may need to depending on the each map stage, you may need to swap out those in your first team with some from, you know, the Anis one copy tier or from those situational tier. But vast majority of time, your main go-to team was probably going to be from the superstar. And then like I said, yeah, your situational are those still nice, which are 
potentially play it every now and then. And if you really have trouble fitting or certain, then pick someone from this tier as well.